This week on The Droids, we talk about the High Republic being delayed until January of 2021. And of course, more news surrounding The Mandalorian. And the Jedi Temple Challenge is coming to Star Wars Kids on YouTube. All that and oh so much more this week on The Droids. <laughs> Welcome back to the Droids. You're looking for a Star Wars podcast. Alongside Ryan and Sam, I am Mike, and pleased to be here to talk about what really is not monumental news in the Star Wars galaxy, but still exciting that there is a bit of new Star Wars content coming out. I think content has become this, uh, you know, bit of a dirty word, but it is when you think about all the different channels that they're putting things out on now. Jedi Temple Challenge is the first thing we want to discuss this time around because. We finally saw a bit of footage. We saw a teaser trailer for Ahmad Best hosting what is essentially Legends of the Hindu Temple brought back to life in a new form connected to Star Wars in what looks like an elevated version of it. And I wanted to go around and just see what we thought. Are we excited to watch this? Before I do that, I want to mention, and kind of curious what you both think about this, this was originally slated as a Disney Plus series. It is now being moved to Star Wars Kids YouTube. I'm kind of confused because isn't Disney Plus desperate for content right now? Anyway, things to think about as your first impressions of Jedi Temple Challenge. Well, potentially a downgrade. Who knows? Um, people may notice Chris is not with us. No worries. He's okay. He's actually he's got his helmet on. He's got his elbow pads on. He's got his knee pads on. And he's training for the Jedi Temple Challenge. <laughs> Love it. Yep. <laughs> So he's been getting up early. He's been doing the thing. He's been, uh, you know, hopping through tires. Oh, they need to uh, have an episode of, like, old people. Swing. Not Chris. But, I mean, like, older Star Wars fans doing this temple challenge. It, it has to happen. Yeah. So they're going to, like, dig up Alec, Alec Guinness. <laughs> uh, they're going <laughs> to... Um, yeah. Peter Cushing. We're going to get a lot of people. No, I'm talking about doing the it. 1977 OG, OG original trilogy fans who are still hanging on. Get them out there doing the Temple Challenge. I'd love to see Ryan Johnson and J.J. Abrams train and go oh, head wow. to head in this one. I think we know how that would end up. J.J. would have his assistant do it. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Um. I. I mean, like, yeah. JJ I mean, would explain why he target. bypassed all of the all of the challenges and just did his own thing. Yeah. <laughs> Holocron. What the hell is this? Yeah. They do like a a baton handoff, and JJ would just throw the baton on the floor and go. No. I just thought that. I just thought um, that people don't really like to be challenged by things, and they'd probably rather see me walk there. You know. <laughs> you walk in. So this um, is too meta. I, mean, I don't I think need it looks, meta in my Star Wars co- game shows. It looks really cool. It's obviously not like targeted at me. I'll like I'll, I'll check it out just to see like what the challenges not are. I'll probably at you. like think it's awesome. Yeah, I mean, like I think I'm a I'm a slightly older than their their demographic they're going for. But it's like I did look at it, and the production value is mind blowing <laughs> for the kind of show it is. Yeah. The amount of space that they had. Like I remember thinking Global Guts was like ve- like oh, yeah. vast and like cavernous, and this just looks gigantic. Um, so I think it'll be super fun. Well, and like, I, th- I love that Ahmed Best is hosting it. Um, I think it'll be like a really charming show. And Jedi Temple Challenge has its own version of Mo, who seems to be a droid. And that droid is played by Mary Holland, I believe. Really? Oh, yeah. she's the best. Yeah. And that's what I'm really excited about, uh, is, is Mary Holland. I'm so jazzed that she's going to be, she's going to be on this. Um, I fell in love with her on uh, on like all her appearances on on Comedy Bang Bang, and now she's you know she's turning up in like commercials and getting more work and stuff. But it's really cool that she's going to be um, you know she's going to be on this this Star Wars thing. I mean, obviously she's not going to be. From what I'm seeing, from what I'm seeing, she's actually like in a droid suit. Yeah, which which is very charming. I'm sure oh, it's going to she's... be. She's definitely in there. They're not doing the the Pedro Pascal where she's voicing it from a distance and somebody else. <laughs> well, is in the obviously, suit. in the suit is Brendan Wayne <laughs> and um, Mary Holland is doing the voice. I can't wait for the unmasking at the end. Though. I'm. I, they just do a quick old swaparoo. Ahmed Best looks awesome. Like he looks so. Cool. I'm so. I'm so glad he's hosting it. I think that's awesome. He looks like I he's am. having a lot of fun too, which is great. 
Yeah. I'm I'm a little I I didn't actually notice the whole thing about like I don't know why they're moving this to YouTube and that does bum me out because it's like yeah. even if they wanted to do that why wouldn't they put it on both you know what I mean like it, it's it's like the kind of thing where maybe that maybe they'll do that maybe they'll permit but it seems like they want to drive people to Disney Plus and you've already got paid subscribers some of us paid for three years in advance uh, <laughs> for Disney Plus so it's like. I don't know. It seems like that's where you want your Star Wars stuff, but I guess kids, I kids think, and YouTube. I think the yeah, kids and YouTube. Yeah, kids and YouTube. I think that it's hard for them to simultaneously put something on a free platform and a paid platform because it's kind of kind of like we saw. You with, know, like people are like, I'm I'm paying for the subscription. Why are people getting it for free? Because like unfortunately, that's how people. Think. Onward coming out is it's a little bit different, but like Onward being available on VOD purchase and then on Disney Plus a week later, I was like, well, why would I ever buy it? Because I'm just going to get it on Disney Plus a week later. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then also, it's possible that they're try they'll probably do a first season on YouTube and then a second season on Disney. Plus. I feel like that's the only thing that kind of came to mind for me is they're kind of feeling uh. it out. And seeing like what everybody's appetite. Hey, we really enjoyed this. This went well. Let's move it to Disney Plus now because you know we have an audience that's now built in. That it's a possibility. But I, I think what you're saying, Sam, is like this is where kids are finding it, and you need to have a YouTube presence. That's why they started Star Wars Kids, and you need to have a YouTube, you know, reason for people to continually come back to that channel. Um, and I think that's you're really trying to again maybe have this be the first entry point kind of like galaxy of Mm -hmm. adventures where it's like i don't know anything about star wars but this game show is fun and now i want to know about more about star wars if you're eight or ten it's also very possible that they did an algorithm and knowing that kids don't have spending power because they're kids and they don't have money that they could that they knew they could sell ad buys for more money on YouTube than they would have gotten in subscriptions for Disney Plus based on this show. Ooh, that's such a tricky thing, though, because with that Ooh. new policy, yeah, but it's a brand. You, you can't advertise to kids, or you have to do it in a... I don't know all the um, inner workings of it, like, but you have to have very specific ads that run that are not going to be, um, I don't know, detrimental to kids. So they can't run the Marlboro ads anymore? No, you know, Joe Smooth mm. Camel ain't going to be there. They they can't they can't have death and stick commercials. And what was cooler to kids than a camel with sunglasses on? You know what Nothing I mean. Cooler. I mean, you it's my buy entire like you had that old cowboy based, who looked oh my, like a catcher's mitt. I just realized somebody I work with has based their entire life on Joe Camel's aesthetic. He wears the same <laughs> shirts, sunglasses. <laughs> oh, it explains everything to me. I was trying to figure Joe out what camel he was doing. Wore shirts. Yeah, didn't he wear like a Hawaiian shirt under a blazer? Or am I making that up? Sounds right. It sounds. I mean, it sounds right. <laughs> you want to buy some death sticks? <laughs> well and you know what kids listen to your uncles ryan sam and mike those are death sticks don't smoke yeah don't smoke uh especially the, during a uh, pandemic that's I'm about looking, a respiratory so I'm problem looking at a picture of joe i'm looking at a picture of joe smooth he looked more like a like a debonair like he, a lot of tuxedos but it all changed like one he has a turtleneck and a blazer over it that seems like it was from the 80s seen a lot of tuxedos one with a leather jacket so he was more of like a ken doll kind of oh. dude where you could dress him you know how do you want your joe smooth i mean at times joe he's Campbell, clearly just right? ripping off miami vice pink shirt white blazer <laughs> Is it joe smooth or joe camel, joe camel oh, joe, but it says camel. smooth character on all these ads uh, so it's uh, not, joe uh, not related to joe hackett no sadly i mean who also wore leather jackets well he wore bomber jackets Let's be honest, and Faye wasn't very happy with that because she didn't get the pay raise she needed. Uh, anyway, that's right. We're very I, excited. I just want to, just for the idea though, just imagining being like, I loved Legends of the Hidden Temple. It was like one of my favorite shows as a awesome. kid. It was so cool. World and building. the idea of like, I I have I have truly I have truly mixed feelings about this from one regard. I'm very excited. I think it's like, oh man, imagine if it was that, but bigger and set in Star Wars. I would have been so over the moon. This is amazing. Like, And I think that's really cool. I also am like, I think it's sort of a little bit of a bummer that it's like, in order to bring back this like great idea, this thing that I loved, it's like got to be tied to a bigger IP. It's got to oh, be like They're bringing back Hidden Temple stuff. on its own. Oh. It's coming back on Quibi, I think. They also, <laughs> I mean, so it doesn't. It sounds like it's not it's coming not back. Coming back. <laughs> uh, <laughs> um, they also did a Legends of the Hidden Temple like movie on Nickelodeon. Did they, based on the world of Legends of the Hidden Temple, yes. I didn't know that. That's cool. Uh, yeah, 
I mean, I didn't watch it. Again, it's not. It wasn't marketed to me, so you know. But you know, it was like a like a you know, Ryan. Not everything has to be catered to you. Thing. Maybe you should expand your boundaries no, it, of the type I, of things so, you no, watch. No, no, no. <laughs> Something I knew as soon as I said it. Something doesn't have to be marketed or for me to enjoy it. However, when it comes to the Legends of the Hidden Temple movie that was on Nickelodeon, it it gets to the point that having no kids, I would have felt strange <laughs> being a viewer of it. How do I? Ex- oh yeah, I watched. Did you that. feel the it, same it was way? So clearly not during the Gutenberg Tower of Terror TV movie. I mean, that was meant for kids, but I jumped headfirst in. I might have been thirteen at that point. So yeah, I think that's. I mean, you can't quote anything that was made when we were kids. <laughs> um, I, and I also want to say because I know he's listening right now during his training. Chris is on the rock wall, and I, I want to say, buddy, you're in the home stretch. You only got a few more feet to go, and then after this, the five mile run, you could do it, buddy. Should we just, whenever we're allowed to get back together, all of us do our own sweeted version of Jedi Temple Challenge for us as adults? Uh, yeah, I'll buy all the foam blocks, and you can buy the slides. Cool. And uh, Chris, Chris will have the rope, obviously, because he's doing the rock wall on the training right now. Great. Sam, you could bring the orange slices. I'll keep you kids nice and hydrated. Mm-hmm. Well, June third on Star Wars Kids on YouTube. Uh, we'll all check it out, I, and you know, some of us will be repeat viewers. Some of us will brush it off as not for them. Anyway, <laughs> back to <laughs> other news. I don't want to be put on some kind of list. Meow. <laughs> the High Republic uh, Project Luminous, which we've all been anxiously anticipating, and I say that genuinely because. Yeah, I, I think initially I would have maybe joked a little bit more, but as we've gone into all of this, I'm like, oh, something new that could be the foundation of new storytelling in Star Wars. I'm very excited about it. It was supposed to come out in For August. Sure. It felt like that was um, you know reasonable and we would be able to dive in. Now it's been pushed back to January. I don't know you know what the restrictions are, why they can't publish it earlier. Uh, just a little bit disappointed that it's going to be delayed, you know, and I think I've talked about it on the pod before. I need those lights on the horizon for me. I need something to look forward to and to lose that in August. I mean, come on, guys. What what are we doing here? I'm actually a little surprised, and I'm not saying this is a criticism. I know nothing about that industry of, like, publishing, but it's like, it seemed to me like that was the kind of thing that could stay on track through all of this. Yeah. Um, I understand that the supply chain issue of, like, printing books and selling books would be an issue, but I assumed it was mostly going to be digital anyway. Because I feel like that's where just, like, book sales are right now. Especially Um, from... So I'm surprised. I mean, I'm disappointed, but I understand, obviously. It's like, you know, the the world is crazy right now. Marvel has also been... I mean, you know, Disney Marvel has has been, of the two big publishers, DC and, and, and Marvel... Marvel's been the one that does the like the day and date release on digital. You can buy stuff directly. Um, you know, DC has done a and and Warner Media has done all this weird stuff where they put things behind, you know, subscription services. You have to wait like they don't release books for like a year after they come out in print unless you're buying single issues and all this weird stuff. Whereas Marvel, it's like you can buy pretty much everything as I understand it. Um, so I'm I'm with you, Ryan. Like. Um, you know, most most people in the industry, it's like they're working digitally anyway. Um, and if you're an artist and you're working traditionally, you're still like as a comic artist, it's like you're still scanning and stuff like, the, you know, the, the industry has changed. You're not having to be, you know, in a room together to, to write and draw books anymore. So I, I just wonder if it's if it's traditional media in the comics industry is still large enough that they're just like. If we can't be in stores and we can't have people at stores, nobody's buying comics. I, I wonder. The comic stores are really struggling, and that sucks. I mean, I, it, <clears throat> they were struggling before, too. So it's like, yeah, yeah, it is a wonder. It's like how much do they want to contribute. Like, maybe they want to wait until people actually, because they want, my optimistic thing is that they want to help comic book stores. There's a... So it's like they're waiting until people can go to them. I'll have to look it up. I'm I I can't remember the type. There's a there's a fascinating um, read on the like the history of comic book publishing and comic book stores, and it was basically like it all comes down to the like Diamond Distributors, which like has like w- was in some ways at the time like a savior for a lot of comic book stores is like now the reason that so many are failing and when you combine it with digital like there's just like this fascinating history of like this this fringe sort of formerly fringe and now hugely popular media that is obviously responsible for like everything at the box office now 
being like just barely able to hang on every 10 years <laughs> for existence. Yeah. I'll, I'll look it up and try and send it. While people are waiting for the High Republic, this is a great time to get into the Th- Thrawn trilogy of books. And I think, uh, you know, you found a lot of other people who have joined you in that effort. Uh, yeah, I'll um, I'll call up all the guys who uh, who read that <sighs> with me. And, uh... <laughs> 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 um, no, I mean, they're... The, the the books are good they're great i i said i think last week i want to read the i i want to try and read master and apprentice because it's got my boy qui-gon in it i did try to read it i didn't get very far into it i i maybe i need to be a little more forgiving i don't think the writing is bad it just felt a little stilted in the early portion i was like okay i'm moving on and then i started that's usually the issue i started a thrawn book uh and i really was into that and then you know life happened and we we all had to change the way we were doing things um but i I will i mean no more stop reading reading. (laughs) Um, i mean i have to say i don't have the time in my life well that's the thing yeah yeah mike mike has responsibilities and things um (laughs) it's true it's true uh i started reading the thrawn book and they spent about sorry i just hit myself in the face with my own microphone um that's what you get i got too excited um, they started the Thrawn book with like a 10 page description of him, like describing a space battle. And I was like, this seems more of a visual medium. Kind of thing. <laughs> <laughs> I was not following anything. <laughs> and like, I knew all the names. Like, I was like, I know what a, a wing is. I know what a tie destroyer is. There's yeah. definitely an element to any, I mean, any of the like sort of, I don't know what you call it. Like, like branded like branded literature you know like any any books that are licensed licensed literature um there is a there is a very real thing that is like uh, part of the the like stock and trade is like for the writers is to like essentially appeal to nerd culture by like showing like see i know the labels i know the things so there's a lot of descriptive text that like you wouldn't find in perhaps a better written book i think those are among the best written books that 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 i've encountered in that that like genre of writing but um or better written books like i'm not trying to trash them but like that's why they do that that's why they like drop like they have to reward people who have like spent a lot of time to know this stuff yeah Yeah, it's and i get that it's like ready player one it's like reading ready player one Maddening experience. Ready Maddening. They made a book out of that? <laughs> <laughs> well, a couple of anniversaries came and went over this past weekend. 43 years uh, since Star Wars, or A New Hope as some may call it, premiered uh, in 1977. We already talked about the 40th anniversary of The Empire Strikes Back. But more importantly, and maybe most importantly of all, two years since the glorious premiere of Solo, A Star Wars Story. What should have set off an entire new storyline that captivated audiences across all forms of licensed media. <laughs> it's <sighs> had two years of an anniversary. Oh, and, and, you know, when you go back and you listen to that instant reaction, there's no greater champion, no greater fan than good old Sam of, of Solo. Yeah, I spent the weekend, uh, I celebrated by um, by watching all the movies Alden Ehrenreich's released since then. I mean that's not <laughs> his for him. <laughs> uh, it was, a, he was fine. I mean, you know. I'll tell you what. If it was up to me, I'd be on a on a warm cantina with Alden Ehrenreich, baby. <laughs> Fly the ship for me. I'm from Queens. <laughs> Wait, you, I want to ask though. Right when now. you sign on, when you sign on to that role, you sign on to you know what you're getting. I do want to say though, genuinely, if it came out during quarantine right now, how do you think it would be received? Well. Solo, it'd be very well. Yeah, great. If it was released That's, on streaming, it'd be the best streaming movie I've ever seen. Honestly, if it was released for yeah, if it was yeah, no, if it was I, released I, on I streaming, it'd be insane. I'd go, I'd go Solo, Roma, The Irishman. <laughs> if if Noel on Disney, don't if Noel, they yeah. released if they released it now or if it came out now, I think it would also have the added benefit of it's coming. It would be coming out on the heels of the Last Jedi. And the Rise of Skywalker, which pretty much split like fifty percent of Star Wars fans hate one and fifty percent hate the other, you know. Um, and so, so it's this like, would be the great unifier. This, 
it's this i think it would benefit tremendously from the idea of being so middling of like being like <laughs> hey it's this one this one is a pure nostalgia grab it's also outside of the whole skywalker thing it takes a favorite character it's a romp it moves quickly like i it, all the things that you 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 called it out on twitter mike you can listen back to our immediate reaction. I loved it. I came out of the... I, I think that movie does have the trick of, like, when you're watching it, you're probably having a good time. I think it's not a good movie. But, like, it would do well, Sam, you know? Worse, it's a fine movie. It's just fine. I think, yeah. that I, it, I do think that your Crimson Dawn tattoo hasn't aged as well as you thought it would. <laughs> I think that... If it was re- if they release it now on streaming though, it would have the added pressure of like they shot this thing in 2017. What took them so long? <laughs> Better be good. They've been editing it for two years. Yeah. So you know, I mean, Ron Howard famously is such a meticulous filmmaker. And like, you know, <laughs> oh boy. You know, I know what I'm getting into when I go down this road, but still have to do it. I I don't know. I think. I think you just would have had, as you set up, Sam, it's a very different time and space for Star Wars fans versus six months after The Last Jedi and the way that people are responding to it. I think there would also just be this appetite for something as exciting as this, and you might have had it be a cultural moment. Now, obviously, you can never plan for a pandemic that keeps everybody at home and hold something till that, uh, but the idea that right now everybody was, you know, social media was all about the last dance for a little while because everybody was watching the last Mm. last dance if solo and then like trolls trolls was a big conversation even though it was a kids movie if you had solo come out i think you would have found yes i agree it's fine i I think it's a little bit better than fine i have more fun with it maybe than most i think you would have found that people would have said that was really enjoyable i want more and they would be doing more solo if it came out now do you think that do you think that uh, if it came out now, Rebel Force Radio would say Saga saved like they did after Episode Nine? Because yep, it... I think so. I've, yeah, I, I'm pretty sure. Yeah, it was unlistenable. Because finally, a mo- finally, I know that I was talking about marketing movies being marketed, but finally, a movie for them, huh? <laughs> episode Nine, finally, a movie for Rebel Force Radio. <laughs> what everybody's been desperately clamoring for. I do I, think that yeah, if they, I've always said if they, I've always said I'm afraid the Rebel Force Radio guys aren't represented enough in this movie. <laughs> Thank God for Solo. If I do think if they if they were if they released Solo now or if it if it came out now or if it had been made you know in advance of this and they released it direct to streaming or something, I think that you would have something where they'd say we can't and we can't wait to continue this story on season one of. Solo or season one of Lando, scoundrels on, on, of scoundrels, that's, you know, that's and, and still being, spinning it off. That's still what fans want. I mean, it's actually there's a the, over the weekend on the two year anniversary, make Solo two happen, uh, trended number two worldwide with twenty five thousand, thirty thousand plus uh, entries, tweets going out there. I mean, well, I if AT and T, if AT and T yeah, buys AT- Disney, I'm sure they'll capitulate. Just <laughs> like that. Hey, and if every one of those, if every one of those people tweet, if every one of those thirty thousand tweets bought a movie ticket, we're looking at a opening weekend of upwards of three hundred to four hundred thousand dollars. And it's totally worth it. <laughs> it's totally worth it. Do you think they should do a table read of the Lord Miller? uh solo do they have a script on youtube where where it's just the actors making up lines <laughs> <laughs> i saw another thing going around is that there are star wars fans um clamoring for a four-hour revenge of the sith cut that they're hoping to be again the mold of justice this League. this i can get on par- board for. <laughs> i am excited for the i'm pretty sure the script was like 80 pages but i don't, I don't know where the the four-hour cut's coming from talking about i'm glad that best We're movies kind of, ever released on streaming i think we all know what it's gonna be the best movies Tenet? ever released on streaming 2021 <laughs> baby Tenet? Zack snyder's justice league we're uh, talking about it right now the greatest movie to i be thought released you were talking about lovebirds is the most tweeted about is the most tweeted about Warner brothers movie ever <laughs> <laughs> Listen, I hated Man of Steel. I hated BVS even more, but I think Justice League's really going to nail it. <laughs> <laughs> I liked Man of Steel. I think Zack Snyder cool. tweeted today. <laughs> <laughs> oh, boy. Well, glad that you have HBO Max, Sam, so you can indulge in all of your DC I don't moments. have it. I don't have it. I haven't no, watched anything. Sam doesn't have HBO anything. No, I'm not gonna. He's gonna have, and what's so funny is I know he's gonna get it to hate watch Justice. 
I'm a hundred percent. I'm a hundred percent gonna wait till they. I'm gonna hundred percent wait until uh, week seven after all six parts are released weekly, <laughs> and then I'm gonna do the free trial. I'm gonna sign up for the free trial. <laughs> I'm gonna watch it. And I'm going to text you about it uh, for the next five years. <laughs> my favorite thing to do online is to sign up for the free trial and immediately go to my account and hit cancel. <laughs> <laughs> and then it have it say it's good until so and so yeah. date. And I go, thank you. I know. <laughs> Yeah. Well, as you can tell, we don't have a lot of uh, other news to get into. I, before we wrap up here, real quick, none of us have watched. None of us have watched Clone Wars. We're not talking <laughs> no. about that. <laughs> We're trying to get there. We're not talking about the the table talks, the dinner for five, or whatever the Favreau's doing. We're not um, talking. Actually, we haven't they watched are, that. They are really great. Disney Gallery. I, I, yeah, they're good. When they did the episode about the volume. I loved it. It was so cool to see how it all operated. But I will. I haven't watched any of those things, but I will say this: The Last Dance is very good. And uh, also, so is the Invisible Man. I was just going to go around the room and say, tell us what you're watching real quickly. And so yeah, you, you checked yeah. it off there. Ryan. I have to sign off in three minutes. But I got to tell you, the Invisible Man is one of the best movies I've seen in a long time. I thought it absolutely rocked. Excited to see it. Sam, what are you watching? Uh, I'm not on, honestly like barely anything. We watch a lot of my wife and I have been watching a lot of cooking shows, a lot of Bon Appetit YouTube channel. Uh, and then I get you know what? I watched Last Crusade. Uh, about a week ago, uh, those indie movies. Oh. I'll tell you what they should they should do another one of those. <laughs> they should maybe with uh, James Mangold directing. Hey, now there's an idea. I definitely choice. don't think the the originals relied on the directing. I think it was. <laughs> 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 no, I like Mangold as a filmmaker. I'm I'm excited. Or on the or on the mobility of the <laughs> star. <laughs> I'm I am. Uh, look, I'm. I'm signed up for it, um, but the, yeah, that that's kind of not it. the years; it's the mileage. I, and luckily, Harrison Ford now has both. <laughs> <laughs> Mike, uh, what about you? I binge watched Never Have I Ever on Netflix, and let me tell you, Mindy Kaling, she knows how to make a great show. I really love. Oh, it's it. so it was good. so well it's done. So good, yeah, yeah. John McEnroe with the voiceover was hilarious. Not the best part of the show by yeah. far. The writing and and the characters were great, but it's just a very funny tweak that they have on the show. Um, it's worth it. Fly through it. You know, watch it all on a weekend or, or a night, whatever you want to do. But it is, it felt yeah. like uh, a show that I haven't seen in a while where I was that invested in the characters while having emotional reactions and having fun. And it felt like a perfect balance of it. Better than our other show, Four Weddings and a Funeral. Uh, it was really great. So I can't recommend it enough. I second that. It is great. Yeah. All right. That's going to do it for the Droids. Let us know what you're watching. Uh, Droids Pod, Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, droidspod at gmail.com. Rate and review us on iTunes. And we'll be back next week with another edition of the Droids You're Looking For, a Star Wars podcast. What they Um, Chris, you're at mile three. Only two more to go, buddy. You got this. (laughs)